We're going to have a bit of a chat about speed and velocity. We should have a pretty good intuitive idea about what that is. Essentially, we're going faster if we can cover more ground in the same amount of time. So right now I'm walking at about one and a half meters every second, something like that. But if I increase to a run, you can see the ground is going by underneath me faster, and so I'm moving faster. So here in my uh, nice little spot beside the Manawatu River, I'm going to see how far I can walk in 10 seconds, how far I can run in 10 seconds, and then sort of get the idea of the range of human speeds that we can do. Well, someone like me anyway. So what we're actually going to calculate is the average velocity over a time interval. So that is a vector, you take the displacement over that interval, divide it by the length of time, and that gives you the average velocity for that whole time interval. So the interesting thing about this, it only depends on your initial and final positions. Um, so it's not the velocity at a certain point in time, it's just the average over that whole interval. Okay, so what I'm going to do is we're going to start the clock, um, and we'll see how far I can walk in 10 seconds. Starting now. So this is my normal walking speed, walking along, seeing how far I can go in 10 seconds, and it's going to pull me up about here. Okay, so let's see if we can figure out our average velocity now. So we have our initial position is zero meters. Final position, looking at that picture there, looks like about 16 meters, which means my displacement is going to be my final minus my initial, so that will be plus 16 meters, 16 meters to the right. And my elapsed time, well that was 10 seconds, and so this means my average velocity is going to be delta x over delta t, which is 16 over 10 is 1.6 meters per second. Now let's see what it will be if I do some running. Now we're going to do our 10 second run, starting now. Come on. Let's do the same exercise. So when I went running, I covered a bit more ground. Uh, so my final position this time round is going to be about 52 meters, just approximately. Uh, my displacement is therefore 52 minus my initial, which is zero, so it's also plus 52 meters. And elapsed time, once again, 10 seconds. And so my average velocity is my displacement divided by the length of time, uh, which gives me uh, this time five, 0.2 meters per second. Obviously I'm no Olympic sprinter, but a fast sprinter can do 100 meters in 10 seconds. So that means your upper limit for human speed is around about 10 meters per second. So let's have a look at what average velocity looks like on a graph. So as I said before, there are the starting point and a finishing point. And we said that the average velocity is equal to the displacement divided by the time. So that's my final position minus my initial position divided by my final time minus my initial time. Now we can actually see these things on this picture here. So here are my two points, just arbitrarily. My final position xf is up there, my initial one xi is down there. So this displacement, which is the difference between these, is just this distance along here, this vertical distance, final minus initial. Uh, if it's positive, it will be upwards, and if it's negative, it will be downwards. So actually, what my displacement is literally just this distance along, I'll put it right here, this distance along here. This is my delta x. So it's going to be positive if upwards, and negative if downwards. And similarly, that delta t, that's just this distance along here. Um, so when we are calculating this average velocity, we're just taking that delta x, which is that height, if you like, divided by this how far we go across, which we might call the run. And so what we're actually doing is we're calculating the slope of this straight line here. So the average velocity is the rise of our graph divided by the run, which is the slope of that line there. And you might remember from our motion graph video, when we have a straight line, that just corresponds to basically the object moving at constant speed. So we can think of this average velocity, if it's a straight line, as the object having the same velocity every point along this line, if it's straight like this. Okay, now there are some, some shortcomings with looking at just average velocity. Um, if you imagine 
a motion, well, actually, let's have a look. Let's, let's do two different motions in this video. Both uh, start in the same place, but you can see they set off in different directions. But then at the end of the 10 seconds, they both end up in the same spot as well. So in that video, we had two different motions that both started and ended at the same point, but one of them pretty much went at a constant speed from point A to point B. The other one started going backwards to start with, and then turned around, and then went quite fast, and ended up at the same point at the same time. Let's change color, actually. So as far as average velocity goes, these two are both going to be the same. Um, because remember, average velocity only depends on the start and finish point of our motion. So if we want to actually sort of dive down a bit deeper into these two motions, we're going to have to look at something a little bit more precise. I mean, one thing we could do is we could split our motion up into multiple pieces, and we could look at the motion, say, to this point here, and work out an average velocity based on this slope. And then we could take another little piece and look at the average velocity um, based on this slope. And we can continue on and sort of work out average velocities over different time intervals as we go. And in fact, that's kind of the idea behind how we're going to define our instantaneous velocity in the next video. All right, that'll do for now. We'll see you next time. Ka kite anō.